and into the room. And now we're streaming live on ICA Group. That's amazing. Technology, we absolutely love it. Welcome, Nikki. Hello. <laughs> We're all going to be chilled. We'll have a bit of a laugh today. So we are ICA TV and we are um, coming to the group here and we will be sharing it out on YouTube and on the page here to help and support business women in their, in their growth of their business. So today, as we said, Nikki is here. Um, looking amazing. I love your top. Love your little logo. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so tell me the name of your business and what it does. Okay, so uh, my business is called Pasture Perfect. Um, I'm, I'm a farmer and um, we farm 72 acres. It's, it's a small farm um, up in um, Carmarthenshire in West Wales. Um, we're about 260 metres above sea level. So we do have some exposure issues um, and it's also very wet. But that aside, <laughs> we produce, the land grows the most beautiful grass. And so we are able to produce 100% grass fed beef. Um, and I also produce um, pork, bacon and sausages. And we retail those direct to the public. So that's our business. Um, it's the production of carefully naturally reared meat um which we directly sell wow so you actually know all your animals and that's what we're saying you know who they are yeah. you know if they're okay you know if they're a little bit under the weather you can care for them directly yeah absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. awesome so when you say how many acres do you say 72 acres 72 mm -hmm. with our, our layman head here Right. I can't see 72 acres. How big is that? If you look at it, it's something we know, like oh. um, a football field, for example. There's a lot of football fields. A lot, isn't it? I'm going <laughs> 72 acres. I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm gazing aimlessly out the window and thinking that's, that's a lot of football fields. A field. lot. So we're not oh. looking a little back garden. We're not looking... Oh, no. no, 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 no. It's... Um, it, I'll, I'll be honest it would for what we do it would be it would be nice to have to have more especially as the business has grown um but we try to keep our stocking rates um we try to keep our stocking rates quite low because we're only feeding grass to our cattle so we need to make sure we've got enough grazing and we need to make sure we've got enough um conserved forage for the winter um and also by not pushing the land too heavily we're able to um make sure that we're we're really caring for the for the wildlife side of things as well mm. that's all very integral to 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 what we do here and we know we've got the balance right at the moment we've got top predators like barn owls and short-eared owls and um red kites and buzzards and so if you've got those then you know you've got everything else further down the food chain is is there for them and and it's all about keeping that right that's a important part for us yeah, there, there has been a lot of press out there. I'd like to touch on it a little bit about the fact that, um, you know, this veganish thing that's going on, the people have a choice, whether we eat meat, we have a choice. We have um, the fact that we can live on was it keto diets, which is no carb. You know, there's so many things out there that we can choose to do. And yeah. I think we, we all have that choice. Um, but also I find the challenge is when people um are unkind to producers mm. about you know we have the choice of um being a meat we eat meat you know we eat quality meat and we support local as you know but actually to be able to have that choice without it being um told that we're being wrong yes it is mm. is is quite upsetting mm. you know um and as we and yourself are rural we do support locally um, so what would you say to people who want to eat meat um, but want to eat quality meat but are sort of like stuck in a town or a city or something like that? Okay, I would, um, I think with, with, with meat especially, I mean I, I'm, with all my food I'm quite keen on, on providence, um, I like to know where it's come from, I like to know ideally who's produced it, how it's been produced. Um, but I appreciate if you're in the middle of a city, that's possibly not so easy. Um, try and find out what's available in your local area. Find out if you've got um, any 
For instance, there's various sustainable um, cooperatives out there um, that are now, well, they're springing up all over the place, which is fabulous. So really local, local seasonal sustainable food, in, in my opinion, is where, it, where it's at. You're, you're hearing more of it all, all around. If you can't get meat from direct from a farm where you know how it's been reared and you can ask questions, your next best really is to go into your local butcher. But when you go in there, ask, ask questions. Where's this meat come from? And a bit like us, they like an interested consumer. They like someone who, who, who wants to know. Um, the real advantage with your butcher is your butcher is a, a very skilled individual. They, um, they can advise you on, on, on all the cooking, different, different cuts, what might suit you best. I think they're a very, very underused resource. So if you're stuck in and, and you can't you can't source direct from the farm, get get into your local butcher. Um, I I feel very strongly that that meat in supermarkets is not really is not where it should be. T to me, meat is far too important to be in a faceless refrigerated chiller unit in a supermarket. It's it's no, I, I just, I just find, and I appreciate for some people that's, that's all they can go for. And it's like a lot of, well, it's like everything, it's choice, isn't it? We're all, we can all choose what we eat, where we buy it, how we do it. But if you're at all interested in what you're eating and where it's come from, um, it, it's really, it's, it's a really good thing to be able to ask to ask questions and it's your smaller producers it's your local butcher it's your farmers that will be able to answer that for you mm. so yeah I'm, I'm a big believer in get, getting getting everyone back to to knowing where their foods come from and, and connecting and, and it's one of the reasons why we took part in open farm sunday we've, we've done about five years of open farm sunday it's run by an organization called leaf which is linking environment and farming um they're a, a, a fabulous organization and they have a mission once a year on Open Farm Sunday to get as many people who wouldn't normally go onto a farm onto a farm. And it's like a, a nationwide um, open day. So you've got farmers up and down the country, lots of different kinds of farms opening up and just connecting with people and 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 giving people a day out and, and explaining how 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 their food is produced. And and I actually think, especially at this time, <laughs> 2020 has been one heck of a year everything seems to be changing in the way people think about food and the environment really really find the facts and you can find your facts from the people who are actually growing your food so in in essence it's ask a farmer and open farm sunday gives a fabulous opportunity for people to do that i, I think part of you know my world has been Part, as you know farming I've been my dad was a farm labourer so I bought up a few calves in my time which is a yeah. few things and I've also chased my mum a few times with a few mice um, across the times that she remembers very vividly when I was little um, so I understand but some people feel that actually it might be the fact that you're un, unapproachable because you know you're might be a big farm you know you might not know actually who who is the owner farmer are we just seeing people in tractors or actually do we not see a farm? We might be in the middle of London or, mm. or, you know, somewhere like that. So how would we get in touch with you? Is it like a simple phone call? Um, well, there's, there's for us now, um, we've got our Pasture Perfect page um, on Facebook. And um, if you'd like to follow us, that would be lovely. We'd love to love to see you. Um, we've also got a group. Um, so that's got various that's got a little bit more in depth as to as to what we're doing on the farm um and it's a it's a really easy way to keep in contact um for open farm sunday now then there'll be a, a national website um so it's if you actually if you google leaf l-e-a-f um that will will throw up the open farm sunday link and you can actually just type your postcode in and see where the farms that are nearest to you are are open so cool. it's a it's a heck of a it's a heck of an organization it's 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 good but yeah find us on facebook that's the best way and um yeah that's that's primarily we're we're, we're quite we're quite out of we're quite off the beaten track if i'm honest so um <laughs> yeah 
Facebook, Facebook and Messenger, always good. Awesome. Well, if you pop over the link, as we say with everyone, I'll pop that, I'll pop that, I'll pop that everywhere. I'll pop that everywhere <laughs> and I'll put it on the link and so people can get in contact. If they want to know more about their food and where, where things are produced and how they can get involved with um, the seasonal side of things as well. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So next, let's talk about an ideal client of yours. Okay. Okay. Who is so, it? An ideal client for me would be somebody who is interested in where their food's coming from. So they like they like quality food. They like to know where it's come from. And they like to have um, they like to, they like to have I would say a full freezer, but they like to have stocks in their freezer. So um, for us now, because we sell we sell packs, um, I also have to sell some more quantities as well but we do generally sell sell the packs um so yeah it's someone who's who's looking for that link that traceability um and we have there, there are people when i look at our customer base it ranges from people who are just really into their their really lovely quality food and that's their that's that's where they come into us right the way to, I had one lady who, who basically said to me, I was going to give up meat because I wanted to know where the animals went for processing. And I couldn't get that from any of my, um, any of my standard retail links. But when she came to us, I could tell her where they went, what time of day they went, how they traveled, who dealt with them. And I completely trust the, um, the, the people we use and so she came at it from a I'm not sure she came at it from a from a just really needing to know that when she ate me everything had been done and I could reassure her that yes because we are we are there through the whole process and a lot of a lot of the meat industry isn't a lot of the meat industry isn't you don't get that follow through so yeah it's um I would it's basically about anyone who's interested and and really wants to know where it's provenance isn't it that's the word i'm looking for provenance people who would like provenance in their meat and local to you as well because i know oh, you don't travel yeah local um what we do is we deliver within an hour of the farm dry, uh, farm gate so it's actually quite a quite a good radius <laughs> um but yeah so we we try and keep it we keep it local there's there's yeah we keep it local and again that's another eco side of it you're not putting mm. things in vans you're not overstocking your farm you're looking no. after your land you're yeah. looking after the animals obviously specifically yeah. you are contacting your clients face to face so they can ask questions yeah yeah and so really lo local seasonal sustainable is 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 sort of the buzz of, of what we do. In mm -hmm. fact, there's um, a fabulous group called um, Seasonarians and they've got a website, seasonarians.co.uk. And what they, they basically advocate this. So it's about eating local um, and they've got some really good information on there. Um, I, I do, I do follow, follow them very closely. I, I like their, their whole ethos really. And as a business, that's a research base as well. Oh, it is. It's, it's great. Um, it is. It is good. It is good. And I'd like to see, I would like to see the whole retail market actually being a little bit more, well, helping consumers know. So one of the things that these guys do is um, a traffic light system. So it's green, amber and red. So labels, uh, food that would be labeled red on the shelf would be the ones that have traveled halfway around the world. The ones that would be labeled green would be your local um and they've even got like green plus for next door just down the road like <laughs> someone's popped in with their bag of spuds you know, yeah so. because it, it's otherwise it, it's just making it easy for people to choose to choose food that hasn't been carted just mm. miles and miles and miles and miles for no yeah. reason i think living local to yourselves and the other, other producers locally um, in the countryside is an amazing place to be but it's actually converting people who are um, more less rural than 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 people like ourselves which we're lucky yeah. um, but to be able to go actually we don't have to go to 
the bigger supermarkets not dissing them in any shape no. or form no um, there is there's always a we yeah. all need you know mm. you can you can always go and grab a bag of pasta you know from a supermarket if you want to make it yourself but there are a reason and need for, for that's why they're there absolutely yeah. why they're there. and not everybody's lucky enough to have a skill to use the product no so i also know that you do a little cookery demo talk thing <laughs> that's growing i feel <laughs> tell us about what you do okay so um every now <laughs> i'm only laughing because some of them turn out a bit iffy well i think it's <laughs> fine you know um, and that's lifetime babe that's real life <laughs> so, so um yeah every now every now and again um we we have a little bit of a a, a very simple um cooking demo in my kitchen um so we talk about things like the temperatures to cook your beef um, we talk about various ways to to flavor your beef so we're talking about herbal rubs and spices and things like that so um yeah we've done a few i'm, I'm a big i'm a big fan of rosemary and garlic when it comes to beef oops um <laughs> hello <Bob>. hello <laughs> i'm a big fan of rosemary and garlic when it comes to beef so uh yeah, there's quite a lot of that in there but no it's, it's just it's just good fun and then we also took part in the steak challenge the steak sandwich challenge which was a really good giggle Did enjoy cool. that. i think I one think of the things i love to see is the fact that when your customers have a product from you and they make something and then they share it on your page and your oh groups. i love that i love that we that honestly there we've got some really really talented cooks in that group Oh my word! Yes, and and the pictures are amazing. And yeah, absolutely. It's really, really satisfying to see what people, what people do and how I they know. do it. It's it's fab. So that's a that's a that's another good part of the group. You get ideas. Absolutely, and part of what we're doing here, that Nikki and I outside there bring everybody in. Sorry, we're just engrossing our conversation. Sorry, everybody, come on back. You know, one of the things that Nikki and I do, we've been working together through a couple of programs, Dream to Achieve program, which we we work together. I was going to say last year, but it's not. Yeah. It's this year. Absolutely. Oh, yes, it was. It was just, it was summer, wasn't it? Yeah, it just feels <laughs> like this whole mad year is like... Duh, duh, duh. Yeah. And and one of the things I think would be an awesome thing that when we when we go into our next phase, because we're working on the Action Club, is to actually use, in that nice and possible way, use these recipes and use these things to actually expand your... Um, contacts and people can go actually I might not be buying my meat from Nikki but I can buy it to say it's sustainably from somewhere else and I can do this with it you know and yeah. as a as a marketing you know this is you know it's nice to have a chat but as a marketer here we're talking about getting your name out there so it's not yeah. just keeping within the box you know no. jump out this box it's about going okay what else can we do to share our um, information and our logo and our name to the world and it's yeah. like if you can build up that then people mm. go oh oh I remember seeing that oh oh so and so lives local to there I'll put you in touch so it's more than just well if I put a recipe for example a recipe book of my customers well actually they're my customers so nobody else is going to talk to me it's actually go actually you've got a recipe book and they can give that to Auntie Flo for Christmas mm. You know, because it's like, oh, my God, my recipe's in there of my my beef stew. And you go, oh, really? Cool. I'll have that. And, you know, so it's it's not a big money maker. I'm not saying it's a money maker, but actually we can spread your name a bit further. So I think we need to put that in our little list when we get the chat. Yeah. On our action clubs there. So we are sort of running to the end, but I do want to touch on these little things furry things that keep being born in your gut in your bill. Yeah. So if yeah. anybody wants to see it. any beautiful animals, beautiful babies, then they need to rock over to your page. And That's so who cool. who was the last one? Who was the last one that was born? Uh, I think it was a little we had a little a little a little red heifer was the last one that was born she to was cute yeah she she was she was absolutely lovely we've we've had some cracking autumn calves actually it's it's been it's been really it's been yeah and you know you never tire of it i've been when did we start well my parents started the herd about 35 years ago and it's always been a suckler herd so if i explain quickly um 
the cows, the suckler cows themselves stay on the farm year on year on year on year on year, and each year they have a calf. And then they rear the calf to six months, so they're out in the field with their calf. Um, it's, it's obviously drinking their milk and it starts to graze. And then at six months old, we wean them, and then they stay on the farm with us for another about two and a half to three years because it's grass fed beef production. It's, it's, it's long and slow, which is a totally different system to, to, to grain fed. Okay. So they, we get to know them. We really do get to, and the, the, the core of cows are, well, they're, they've got family lines that go back to the first ones that my mum had, you know, in, in 1984 and things like that. It, it's, it's just lovely. So we've got, they they basically stay on the farm and then they'll 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 have their their calf they'll have their calf each year but i think that why i started this was you never lose how fabulous it is to have newborn animals you never you never do it, it's it's it is it's it's just like a little mini miracle every time it's absolutely it's, absolutely yeah. and the, the same with the pigs i just get this huge sense of pride for the sounds that 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 pop out their litters it's it is it's it's great you know you, you're just working with you're just working with nature and with and with your animals, you know. It's a it's a nice way to be. And that's again going back to leaf and go back to Open Farm Sunday. Yeah. You can actually come and see these animals and go. And you would you name it. You know who they are. You yeah. know their personalities. You know yeah. which babies link to what baby. And you know yeah. and you know how far that that history has gone back. So yeah, absolutely. You know, Open Farm Sunday is an awesome thing. And you get tea and cake. You do indeed. You do indeed. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Get to stroke a few little bits and you go and yeah. talk, to, talk to the farmer and know all about your food and, and how, how you care for the animals. Awesome, awesome. Well, Nikki, I don't know if you've enjoyed, enjoyed this evening morning, but I've actually loved it. You know, yeah, thank I'm you. A big fan. Thank absolutely you. big fan. And um, I'm very proud that we work together and building up. Thank you. Oh, up you've been farm. a massive help with all this. So you've changed the way I, you've changed the way I think about what I can do. If you see what I mean, the possibilities. It's much more. My brain, my brain's much more open to 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 different different ways of doing things now. So oh, thank awesome. you. Awesome. No, it's a, it's a pl absolute pleasure. Uh, and we will get together soon when we're allowed. We're lucky enough, if you're, if you're watching up there, we are in Wales and um, beautiful, beautiful Wales. Damp. Oh, yes. A bit, bit muddy <laughs> at this moment. This is a bit muddy. Um, but we are not in this dreadful lockdown at this moment. And I know a lot of people across the world who are watching in the States. We've got a few members in the States. Hi, guys. And also across, across England and Scotland. Um, England, yeah, England and Scotland and Wales. I, don't, you know, I think we've got a few people in Ireland as well, which is quite handy because they're oh, just across huh. the water. Yeah. It might mean might just swim, a bit damp, a bit cold. Um, so we're really lucky, but we are open, um, whatever open is. We can't go far, we're not allowed to mix, can't go anywhere, but we are open. Um, and the shops are open, but we're not really allowed to go. I don't want to go. Well, <laughs> Yeah, it's not not on my list, my sorry. Um, but obviously England at the moment are closed down until the mid beginning of December. So just love to everybody. I think that's what we're saying. Yeah. Um, you know, keep in touch via our group. Um, any questions in relation to business or if you're struggling, you know, we're all there. You know, come and give us a chat. We're happy to do photos and, you know, talk and put pictures of pretty calves up and you know and sunshine and whatever happens we're there so and that's part of ICA TV as well to be bring people together but back to you my sweet I will put all your lit 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 put all your links up so people thank can you. find you it's thank been you. a total pleasure oh, as you know I love love you guys to bits you're an amazing family as well as farm business. So um, keeping in touch and sharing this is, is a pleasure. So good luck with everything. Cheers, thank you. Keep dry. I will. Yeah. <laughs> Wear your wellies. <laughs> Need your hat on. I'm not used to seeing you without your hat. No, I, I do. This is normally, I've, I've got it on permanently between <laughs> now and April. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a new one in the post, I'll get knitting. Not good at that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but love you lots my darling and out there in ICA TV land welcome if you would like to join us on an interview please get in touch um, we have a few slots even next week so if you're free next week 
come on in. Um, if it's not, if you're not free at half past ten, that's not an issue. We can record it and we will pop it up on a different day. So all cool. So love to everyone. Take care. ICA TV here. Teresa going and get a coffee. Mine's cold. Have a fab day and we'll speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.